Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, driving the Dodge Hornet. And this is the first vehicle Dodge has introduced in a really long time. So what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to do an exterior and an interior walk around. We're going to talk about what this vehicle is. I'm going to give you some driving impressions. I'm going to tell you the things I like. I'm going to tell you some of the things that I don't like. And at the very end, you got to stay tuned. I'm going to tell you a secret. So let's take a closer look right now. All right, let's start with a brief walk around of the Dodge Hornet. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out that um, this is the RT trim. So that means that this is equipped with the 1.3 liter turbocharged engine mated to the plug-in hybrid powertrain. So combined power output is going to be 288 horsepower and then you're looking at 383 pound-feet of torque. You also get 30 miles of all-electric range. Now the base engine is going to be a 2.0 liter Hurricane, delivers 268 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. So a lot less torque but really not that much less horsepower. Um, so uh, take that for what it's worth. But two different powertrains. GT is the base with the Hurricane engine and then the RT has the uh, plug-in hybrid powertrain. So onto the design. So you're looking at the grille here, which is meant to be aggressive and angry. And you know they designed in that mail slot um, portion of the grille. It's functional as are these air vents, the, the hood vents. So um, it is a functional grill in addition to having it look a little bit more aggressive and mean. So walking around to the side, you will see that you have the Angry Hornet logo. So um, <laughs> I love the logos and Dodge likes to call them mascots, but this is, is, is their new logo that is going to be on this vehicle. And I just, I love it. I think it looks really good. Uh, because this has the track package, you're also going to notice it has the Brembo brakes and the red Dodge calipers. When you move around to the back, you are going to see one of the primary differences that you will notice in how this can be told apart from the base GT, and that is the dual exhaust. So the RT will have dual exhaust and the GT will not. Moving to the interior of the vehicle. You can tell this is a higher trim because of the seating surfaces. So this is the Alcantara suede with the, you can see the red kind of filtering through um, in the perforation, it looks really good. Uh, and you do have the, um, the leather edges here. And you of course have a, leather steering wheel. So let's let's power this up and take a look here. You've got your stop start button right there. Because this is the plug-in hybrid version, you are going to have some different gauges because you'll notice um, right here up at the top, it says that it's ready to drive. It's so quiet. Um, you, you might not know it's ready to go. They also have the, um, the, the uh, where you can put it into an electric mode. So you've got your different drive modes here. And as you scroll through, you can put it in e-save, which will charge your battery. You can put it in hybrid, which 
um, allows it to decide what's going to be the most fuel efficient and then you can put it electric mode and it will drive in, well, all electric mode. Um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. You do have one more mode and that is going to be sport mode. And for whatever reason, yeah, I don't know why they put it there. So if you put it in sport mode, it turns your engine back on. You can't be in electric mode um, and be in sport mode, but it is when you are in sport mode that you can activate the power boost function. And in order to do that, you have to hit both of your paddles at the same time when you're in drive and then it will um, allow you to um, go a little bit faster. It adds, I think they said 30 horsepower at the max end of the, you know, the spectrum. So, um, yeah, uh, you do have a, wow, the engine is really buzzy. <laughs> I'm like, I, I never just uh, put that back in drive mode while we are talking, or back in electric while we are talking about um, the, the rest of this. Okay. So uh, you do have a 12.3 inch cluster. That's gonna be standard on both trims, this digital cluster. It is slightly configurable. So if you want to, right now you can see I have the map that is big um, across the gauge cluster. And if you come over here, right there, you can see it says menu view. And so that's just, you hit this and it changes what your gauge cluster looks like. Um, in terms of uh, your speedometer and tachometer and how big that map is in the middle. Um, if you wanted to change what was in the center, you come down here and you hit this button and it gives you some options and then you have to kind of scroll through um, what you want that center view to look like, whether it's performance pages or if you want to go through your driver assist functionality or um, the map you know, you, you do have some options there to scroll through. So it's it's a little bit configurable. Plus, uh, you know, I think as you noticed, it changes a little bit depending on what drive mode you are in um, and, and what um, the rings look like. So you do have a little bit of configurability there. Now, what's really cool is you also have some decent configurability right here. So when you go to the home screen, it allows you to do either a 50-50 split or a 33-33-33 split. And you can configure what is in each of these things. So um, you could put your map and then, you know, your shortcuts here. You could do, um, yeah, I mean, they've got the phone, the technical gauges and the trip information. So you, you but you, you have a lot of things that you can select on what you want there. So like if you hit the edit button, you can put your music there. So, uh, you know, I, I just really like how configurable this system is. And you can create any number of swipe screens that you want um, just by clicking that little plus screen there. Uh, okay, my fingers are really cold. It doesn't want to go. Uh, but there's a little plus thing right there and you could like create another um, swipeable uh, screen. Oh, here you go. You can create another, another type of screen and it gives you the choice of layout one, which is 50-50 or layout two, which is what, you know, 33, 33, 33. Um, so yeah, I like the options. Um, I will say my, when my fingers are cold, it's kind of hard to hit some of these things. So if you want your, your HVAC controls, like I was actually going for the heated seat when I hit the, the, that. So I didn't want the heated seat. I want the heated steering wheel. Um, I don't know. You don't have, you have the redundant controls for um, turning up and down your uh, temperature, but you do not have the redundant controls for your heated seats and steering wheel. And that, I tried to turn them on while I was driving on the highway and that was a little bit hard. So um, just, just know that. Um, maybe get everything turned on before you are driving. So I do like these buttons down here. Uh, but I will point out your volume button is right here and, um, you can also have volume controls on your steering wheel, but it, <laughs> it took me, um, most of the day to figure out that that's where my volume control was. I, I know silly owners wouldn't have that problem. They know it from the beginning or they'd get used to it, but that just doesn't seem terribly intuitive to me. And that also tells me that my husband's going to mess with my music and I don't like that either. Something else to notice while you are in this vehicle, whether you are in the base trim or the 
um, up, upper RT trim, you are going to have this red Dodge stitching on the dash. You know, they, they really want you to know you are in a Dodge. So they've paid attention to the stitching as well as the materials and the overall driver centric focus of the, um, the cockpit area. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, this 10.25 inch screen, also standard, as is wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The wireless charging is available on your upper trims, um, not standard in your uh, base GT. All right, hopping in the back seat, I wanted to show you that even though this is a compact SUV, I, I think that there is some pretty good space back here. Okay, obviously somebody who's taller than six feet, probably not gonna be really comfortable in this space. But um, the, the seat bottoms point up a little bit, which means that, um, actually my feet are kind of dangling. So there's good thigh support for somebody who's taller and you probably have about six inches between my knee and the back of the seat. And this is in the far back position. So um, that's good. And this is soft. So if somebody taller was, you know, kind of pressing their knees against this, they wouldn't hurt their knees. And yep, me and my size five shoes have some decent foot room too. Uh, but what I really like about this, you're in a compact SUV and hey, look at that. You have air vents back here. We haven't seen that a lot lately. Um, you don't have a lot else. You don't have climate controls and you don't have heated seats, uh, but you do have USB-C and a USB-A charge port in addition to the air vents. So I, I don't know, I guess, I guess you can't have everything, but I, I do like the fact that you have air vents back here. And I will point out that you have this nice um, Alcantara suede material and um, the seats themselves are well padded and fairly comfortable. One more thing you've got going on, if you're only seating two people in the outboard seats, you do have cup holders with a little pad that will help hold your smaller bottles in. So that is just a quick look at the interior of the Dodge Hornet. I wanna do a quick transition from the plug-in hybrid RT model over to the GT. And I'm gonna start my transition with looking at the cargo space. So this is the cargo space for the plug-in hybrid. And as you can see, Yep, this is what you're dealing with. And when you lift this up, you've got battery bits under here. And this is going to hold your charging cord and then you've got a tire inflator kit. But you have some storage um, taken up by the electrical bits. And this is in the um, RT plug-in hybrid. So you do lose a little bit of cargo space in this model. Now moving over to the GT model, the non-plug-in hybrid version, yeah, you have a little bit of a drop floor going on here. So you have this tray where this could um, go up into the location of where you have the cargo floor in the plug-in hybrid, but because there are no battery bits, you could drop the floor a little bit and get some extra cargo space. But if you needed a flat load floor for any reason, you could move this up and then push those seats down and then you have a flat load floor. But if you don't need the flat load floor, hey, extra storage space. Plus, when you lift this up, nope, you don't have a spare tire, you have an inflator kit, <laughs> but it looks like there's space for a spare tire. So I'm gonna have to ask if there is an available spare tire there, but yeah, you have a little bit of underfloor storage there too. So that is another difference between the RT plug-in hybrid and the uh, GT gasoline model. Let's, let's take a look at some other differences. Before we hop inside to look at the interior differences, I do just want to point out a couple things on the exterior of this GT. And the first is you have 17 inch standard wheels here. And you may have noticed that the wheels on the red RT that we were looking at were gloss black. That isn't standard, that's part of a black top package. So um, even on the RT models, you'll see some silver wheels, but they will be um, bigger. I think 20 inch are standard on the RT. But nope, the big difference um, on the exterior is going to be the lack of the dual exhaust. In fact, you don't even see a single exhaust back here unless you climb under here and look, the exhaust is hidden kind of underneath the bumper back there. Uh, also, this is more of a matte plastic black, the cladding um, on the GT versus the glossy black cladding we saw on the pretty red RT. 
as we hop inside, um, I will point out one of the other differentiators you have here is going to be the fact that you have manual seat controls. So this is for your seat back. This is going to adjust your seat height. And then you have your um, pull right here, which allows you to move the seat forward or backwards. But hopping inside, everything here <laughs> looks the same. So you have the same intro graphic, you have um, the same 10.25 inch screen, that's 12.3 inches. This is remarkably the same. Um, you don't have the wireless charging, but you do have wireless Apple CarPlay. And again, when you start it up, you've got all of the digital things, including this configurable screen right here and your configurable digital display right there. And again, you've got your red stitching that denotes that this is a Dodge vehicle, but your seats are cloth and a little bit more basic. And these are more functional utilitarian, um, rugged, multi-purpose, I could spill stuff on this and clean it up very easy kind of seats. It also looks like the dash here is going to be a little bit more of a plastic material, but this looks remarkably similar, remarkably similar to the plug-in hybrid. You don't have the sport mode, you have auto stop start here instead, but you have the sport mode instead on the steering wheel. So you've got sport or automatic mode, and then you have your auto stop start off right here. And yeah, otherwise this vehicle looks pretty much the same. And I like these cloth seats. So yeah, the exterior, minimal differences, interior, minimal differences, lots of good tech, lots of good standard safety features, including blind spot monitoring and the um, adaptive cruise control but you don't get the tech package on this and you don't have navigation, so you have to use your Apple CarPlay, which wireless, again, it's wireless, thumbs up. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's what I got for showing you the walk around of the RT and the GT trims. It is now time for me to get into the five good things and the five bad things on the Dodge Hornet. And we'll just, we'll just start with the good stuff. And I'm gonna tell you thing one and thing two have to do with the powertrain. I really like the base engine. So the 2.0 liter Hurricane engine, turbocharged, 268 horsepower, thumbs up. That is a really well powered um, engine for this vehicle. It makes it small, maneuver, maneuverable, peppy, aggressive, all of the good things, and it drives like a Dodge. I love that. Um, on top of that, then you add in the plug-in hybrid variant, and yeah, it just gets better. So in addition to getting 30 miles of all-electric range, you get a little bit more horsepower and a lot more torque, and it makes this vehicle more quiet and even more fun. So I love the fact that you have both options. You can choose whichever one you want and um, go for it. So the Tonale, the Alfa Romeo Tonale, which is also built on this platform, only gets the plug-in hybrid. Dodge Hornet gives you both. So that is thing one and thing two. I also like all of the standard safety you get on this vehicle. So you have standard blind spot monitoring and you have standard adaptive cruise control. Those are really good things. And a lot of vehicles that are in the compact class don't have both of those things as standard. Number four on my list is going to be the fact that you have wireless Apple CarPlay on a 10.25 inch screen. I love wireless Apple CarPlay and it doesn't bother me that it doesn't have wireless charging because really frankly, when I'm just driving to the grocery store, I don't need to plug in. So wireless Apple CarPlay, yay. Um, and the fact that, you know, if I'm taking a longer road trip and I actually need to plug in to charge, who cares? Now, the fifth thing that I like on this vehicle is more of a styling cue, and that is going to be on the exterior, and that is the light bar that goes all the way across with the Dodge logo that is also lit. It's a silly, stupid thing, but I am a sucker for cool lighting graphics, and yeah, that does it for me. Now we are moving on to the five bad things, and I'm gonna start with the wireless charger. This is not standard, it is an available thing, on the Dodge Hornet, uh, but it is not good. 
it doesn't necessarily hold your phone in place and uh, it kind of heats up your phone a lot. So I found while I was using it, when I was driving the RT model, I had my phone on there for an hour and what I think happened is it was heating up and then it would shut off the charger and it would say that there was something in, you know, an, a, you know, a foreign object in the tray to remove it. So I take my phone off, put it back on, it would charge and then it would shut off and then I, it was this whole cycle. So it would charge for a little bit and then all of a sudden it just stopped charging and I think it had to do with the fact that the wireless charger was overheating my phone. So that is thing number one, I don't like it. If you're not gonna have a wireless charger that works in a vehicle, just don't bother automakers just don't bother. Now, while I like the fact that adaptive cruise control is standard on the GT model, when you go into the RT model and you, you know, opt for some of the tech packagey kind of things, um, you have steer assist on the vehicle. And I found when I was playing around with it, it was a little bit pushy. And so I would be steering and it would be like, mm, 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 mm. and, um, yeah, I didn't really like it. So frankly, at the end of the day, I'd probably turn that steer assist function off. Another physical thing that I don't like on the Dodge Hornet is going to be the location of the volume dial. I mean, at least it's a dial and it's not hidden in the screen someplace, but it is on the other side of the gear shift and it is close to my passenger, which means my husband is going to mess with my music and I don't like that. Now, I do have steering wheel controls. I can adjust things, you know, with my, with my thumb. Uh, but the fact that he has easy access to the volume knob and some of the controls, that doesn't make me happy. We don't like the same music. Well, I think that the Dodge Hornet is relatively well priced, starting at $31,000 for the um, base version of the GT, and then you go on up to about $36,000 um, without options if you go for the plus model. Um, and then you start at about $41,000 for the RT, and you go up to about $46,000 on the top end of that spectrum. If you add packages to the RT, you are quickly taking this vehicle up over $52,000. Now there is a $10,000 premium for the fact that you're adding a plug-in hybrid powertrain, but when you're looking at $52,000 for a Dodge and you're looking at a Dodge compact SUV, a Gulp, um, that, that's actually that's a bit of an eye opener there um, because, you know, today I've had the opportunity to test the base base um, with nothing and then the, uh, you know, the, the, the all in with everything on it, including the plug in hybrid powertrain and yeah, $52,000. And while it was nice and I really liked it, that's a Dodge for $52,000 and it's a compact SUV. Now, the final thing that I don't like on this vehicle is, um, yeah, it may not matter because this is, this is just the where we are in our life, but the Dodge Hornet is a Dodge and it drives like a Dodge. It feels like a Dodge. It's peppy like a Dodge. It handles like a Dodge. It's, it's good like a Dodge, except for the fact that there is no Dodge engine sound. So you don't have that... Um, the rumbly in your tummy that, you know, I mean, yeah, you've got four cylinder engines here, but, but it just seems like they could have done something with the tuning of the engine, tuning of the exhaust. They could have piped some sound in. I, I don't know, maybe that's controversial too, but they could have done something that would have made this sound like a Dodge. This doesn't sound like a Dodge. It, it's like a Dodge in every other way, except for the sound. And that is the final thing that is on my do not like list. All right, it is time for me to give you some brief driving impressions, and I feel like I've been saying this a lot lately, but first impressions are favorable. Dodge has done a really good job of making this look like a Dodge and making it drive like a Dodge. Um, yeah, okay, maybe it doesn't sound like a Dodge, but if you got everything else, it's kind of winning. <laughs> I, I don't know. It depends. On, it depends on your perspective. Uh, but we drove for a really long time on twisty bits, and this handled them very well. It felt much more like a car than an SUV, and definitely felt like a Dodge. I like the way the interior looks. I like the technology. I like the base price point of thirty-one thousand dollars, and um, yeah, the seats are actually comfortable too. The one thing I would say for somebody with a petite driving position, the one the one thing that might be a little bit hard is this A-pillar is a little bit chunky and uh, 
that combined with the fact that the side mirror is mounted on the A-pillar creates just a little bit of a blind spot out that window. But yeah, that's all I got. So if I had to summarize this vehicle in a sentence, I would say this is a great new vehicle from Dodge that looks like a Dodge, drives like a Dodge, and has some fun driving dynamics with a great base price. All right, that's it. That is all I have for you on the Dodge Hornet. But wait, yep, there is that one more thing. There is that secret that I have to show you. And it is a, an Easter egg that the designers have put on this vehicle and it happens to be right here. So if you look in the R, like right at the bottom of the R, and I'll give you a close up. If you look right there, um, yep, <laughs> there's a little Fratzog logo, which is uh, signifying Dodge's move towards electrification. So uh, yeah, that's it, that, that's my secret. Thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you aren't terribly disappointed, but that's what I really have on this vehicle. Be sure to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com and I will see you down the road.